The legislative session is now over, and as lawmakers make their way home from the Capitol, we're hearing from several of those representing our area. Northern News Now's Laura Lee joins us in studio with the achievements from the session and issues still facing the state and region. With the DFL trifecta, Governor Tim Walz and Democratic leaders announced early on in the session that they would make abortion rights and legalizing recreational marijuana priorities this year. And they delivered on that, passing bills this session. Just this week, Minnesota became the 23rd state in the nation to now legalize cannabis use. Local lawmakers addressed these laws at a press conference at the downtown Duluth Library today. They touted their achievements of working together on what they call game-changing legislation. First-year Representative Alicia Keslowski points to the DFL trifecta in the state as a factor in their success. This has been a movement getting to this point, that a movement for pro-democracy, pro-choice, pro-worker folks who are made up of multi-regional, multi-gender, and multi-ability, uh, gender expansive folks that that this is what that multiracial democracy looks like as chair of the Senate Labor Committee Duluth Senator Jen McEwen says major investment in transportation like the Northern Lights Express connecting the Northland to the Twin Cities was also important she also says it was important to correct an injustice allowing hourly school workers in public schools and universities to apply for unemployment when they get laid off at the end of the school year something she says Minnesota is leading the nation on. The senator also praised the state's effort to replace all lead pipes in the state, with Duluth getting half of the money it will need. This is exactly what government is supposed to be doing to make sure that we don't have these poisons um, poisoning our citizenry and that we have uh, strong investments in public health going forward to protect people. The DFL lawmakers also touting the PRO Act providing protections for reproductive freedoms and making Minnesota a sanctuary state. Other laws include free school lunches for all Minnesota students, as well as paid family and medical leave. Governor Walls also signed a bill into law moving Minnesota to 100% clean energy by 2040. Back to you. Thank you, Laura. While some bills got bipartisan support, some bills this session were very controversial. Clean energy was one of them. A Republican representative, Natalie Zelesnikar of Friedenberg Township, says because Republicans were the minority, there was not equal representation in conference committees during the hearings of critical bills. We're moving to a 2040 uh, Green Deal, clean energy, and while I'm all for clean energy, we live in a very cold climate that doesn't equal California, and I see the language literally verbatim from California's uh, government, you know, uh, sources that mirrors what we're doing in Minnesota, and we're not a, we're not the same state. She says this all-or-nothing approach to clean energy could end up hurting Minnesotans in the long run.